Welcome to The Daily Jump. And today we're traveling to Petrolia, Ontario in Canada. And we're going to be speaking with someone who is put her hands to work at this time to make some masks. And the person we're going to be speaking to is Jocelyn Daunt, who is also my mother. Hi, mom. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> so, uh, I just wanted to speak with you today because I know that there's a couple of projects that you've undertaken that I think might be interesting for people to know about. But before we delve into that, maybe just speak a little bit about where you are and kind of how this has impacted your life um, and what's going on for you as someone who is in what they consider the vulnerable category. <laughs> yes, I'm 89. Well, I think else. I'm really one of the lucky ones because I am situated in a, an apartment in a house, but it's my daughter's house. So I have, I can roam the whole house, but we're in a tree with a beautiful view and I can go out and walk and there's nobody else around and I can watch the changing seasons and uh yes so i'm really fortunate and i think your view out of your bedroom window it's one of the best views that you can get it is it's a gully with a lot of trees and squirrels and birds now coming back and my daughter my other daughter um made maple syrup there's a lot of maple trees in this gully and so yes lots going on and yet we can self isolate quite easily nice yeah so a little bit less traffic through the household i understand as well because normally all the uh your great grandchildren are coming through there but they're keeping you safe by keeping some not coming <laughs> we miss them though we miss the babies and the young children yes yeah. so you're visiting virtually i understand well we took the masks i had made a whole lot of masks for my granddaughter and we took them over yesterday we drove over to her house half an hour away and the children there's five and my granddaughter they stood six feet away from the car and talk to us through the window oh <laughs> yeah so you've been making masks for your yeah. daughter who we spoke on the daily jump a couple weeks ago about her uh, greenhouse business and food supply so okay she, so she's in need of she's masks bringing the grafters yep She's bringing some grafters in, and she had said that she had some face masks for them. So that's what I was making. She has a couple of other ladies sewing as well, so I'm not making them all. Yes. And so when I, I made third set. <laughs> when I spoke yeah. to her, she was concerned about not wanting to you take masks from medical professionals at this time and so she was excited yes. to see that there was an alternative to this so do you want to tell us a little bit about how you're making this mask I see your sewing machines right there you cut out four okay. of these two for the outside and two for the lining okay. uh, the lining is supposed to be cotton okay so I have cut some out. Yeah. And there's the cutout. Can you see them? There's the cutout. Yeah. And you sew them there. Can you see? I put it in dark thread so you can see that's the lining. Okay. And you put the two of them, then you put them together, right size together and sew along the seam it shows you on the pattern where to sew and this is what it looks like when you've got it sewn 
I don't think you can see, can you? Oh, no, I can see it very well. Okay. And then you turn it inside. So then I pin it in inside. And then I can sew it up. And this is the finished mask. Wow. See the ribbon? And so you can put them on and tie them. So that's all there is to it. And how many and I have, have you made so I far? Have, pardon? How many have you made so far? 37. And I've got three more to make, so that'll be 40. Very good. Yeah, I had lo uh, about four yards of this lightweight cotton material, which I've been using for the uh, lining. And for the outside, you can use anything, polyester, cotton, but lots of material that I've used. That's it. I know how you love your bits of material. Well, I'm gradually working my way through them. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know my mother, my mother comes from a time who didn't really throw things out. And she's been sewing her entire life. And her entire life, she's been keeping all the scraps from all the things that she's made. And so she has a huge cupboard. And when she downsized and moved out of her house and moved into the apartment, that she lives in now. She still didn't throw out all those scraps of the material. And she's been working her way through them, both her yarn and her material, um, making quilts, very creative quilts, out of all this material. So I'm really delighted to see you be able to put that material to, to good use now. So just wanting to know what you think about COVID and the challenges ahead and what you're finding as opportunities? Well, I'm having an opportunity to get, I can't go out to my social activities, so I've been focusing on getting my knitting done. I have some projects I need to do, my sewing done, and uh, reading. The only problem is I'm going to run out of books to read and you can't go to the library. So I'll have to try reading online and I really prefer a book. So we'll see. Yeah. It's very easy just to sit and stare outside to see what's happening out there and do nothing. Yes. Agreed. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we all have the opportunity to appreciate right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just the beauty of sitting and looking out your window and appreciating what's there. Yes, yeah. That's true. One of the so, things that stood out to me, we, we talked a little bit before I started the interview and you were talking about what it was like going through the Great Depression. Do you wanna just share what you said with me before? Oh, right. Um, I grew up as a young child during the Depression. And I know it was difficult for my parents from what they've told me, but as a child with my younger brother and sisters, it made no difference to us. We had a normal childhood as far as I was concerned. Mother made our clothes. She used sugar bags to make our underwear, but I didn't know anything different. And I was quite, we were all quite happy together. Yes. I think that's really beautiful for us to, especially those who are parents right now, um, to, to know how resilient and how 
um, adaptable our children really are. Yeah, at least at least we always went to school. <laughs> I was when when we were talking to Jerry yesterday, and she's got five all in different grades at school, and she's trying to work with what the school is telling her to work with five children in different <laughs> areas. Yeah. And she's finding it difficult. You're going to definitely need to be a listening of, uh, or not, I think we just need to keep loose about what we expect the outcomes are as far as curriculum for children who are being who are at home right now and to understand and accept that there's some greater lessons that are being learned by them that may not be directly tied to the curriculum that are set out by our school boards. Hmm. I don't know how well I would have done if I had to do that with my five, you know. Well, Mom, one thing that was always true about you was that you were always good at just dealing with what life gave you. Yeah. And you had to. <laughs> yeah. That's when the cattle got out to run and back in. That's right. We were really good at that one. Yeah. <laughs> always make sure you had to stick at the door. And underneath every single truck seat. Oh my gosh. I know. You weren't to go out the door if you were going to work with cattle. You were not to go out the door without taking a stick in your hand. Yeah. I think I think that, that really what should have been done was had some better fences built, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, uh Electric storm, a uh, thunderstorm could often put out your electric fences. That's true. That's true. We saw enough. Yeah, you're right. That's, a, that's a, another story. <laughs> my, my cattle chasing skills. I know. I know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, Mom, any parting words of advice you want to leave us lit with? <laughs> just just enjoy each day at a time <laughs> that's all you can do get okay. lots of rest wash your hands stay six feet from people but do go outside if you can for a bit of fresh air yeah you can still go out and stay away from people i know some places are telling you not to aren't they yes and I guess the other thing would be enjoy the view from your window. Yeah, sit and look at the changing season. All yeah. right, Mom, thanks so much for your time today. I appreciate you joining us on The Daily Jump. <laughs>